What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. I sincerely hope each and every one of you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving with your friends, family, and loved ones. In today's video, we'll be covering TOEFL writing, both the integrated writing prompt and the independent writing topic. But first, we're going to be going over the integrated writing question. So please take out your notebooks, grab your writing utensil, and get ready to take some awesome notes. Let's go to my laptop and look at the reading passage together. All right, here's the reading passage. Let's start reading from the last line of the introduction paragraph because that's where the reading's opinion is always or most likely going to be revealed to us. Okay, so let's look at the sentence together. While both are able to capture and hold prey, it is the orb web that is much more efficient at doing so. Okay, so the reading believes that the orb web is better than the other type of web, which would be cobwebs, okay? So the reading favors orb webs, which means that the lecture is going to say that cobwebs are more efficient. So the topic is whether or not orb webs are better than cobwebs or whether or not cobwebs are better than orb webs. So guys, as soon as you're done reading the last sentence of the introduction paragraph, you should know immediately what the reading's opinion is, what the lecture's opinion is, because it's always going to be the opposite of the reading's opinion, and even what the topic of this entire integrated writing prompt is, okay? All right, now that we're done with that, let's move on to the first body. Orb webs are one-dimensional webs built on a flat plane. They consist of spirals of strands of web in an ever-increasing... Okay, too much information. The webs are difficult to see on account of the facts that they are one-dimensional and that the strands, strands are fine enough to be invisible even in bright sunlight, let alone at night. Thus, the majority of spiders build orb webs because insects fly or innocently walk into the webs, thereby becoming easy prey. All right, let's paraphrase this body paragraph. Orb webs are one-dimensional webs that are very difficult to see in bright sunlight and even more difficult to notice at night. As a result, most spiders prefer to build orb webs because they're in their prey usually innocently fly or walk into these webs since they did not notice them. All right, that's the readings first reason and main point. All right, let's move on to the second body paragraph. The flat shape and one dimensional aspect of the orb web are also more efficient uses of the spider silk. This type of web enables the spider to use the least amount of web substance thanks to its relatively simple structure. This plain structure also enables the spider to build the web quickly. All right, that's all we need. Okay, let's paraphrase this. The orb web is the more efficient use of the spider's silk due to the fact that orb webs enable the spider or enable spiders to utilize the least amount of web sus substance and uh, finish building it very quickly due to its extremely simple design. All right, so that's the reading's second reason and main point. Now let's move on to the third body paragraph. Finally, the orb web allows spiders to know when their prey approaches and gets caught. Since the spider lies at the center of the web, it can feel the vibrations of insects from all directions once they get ensnared. Uh, the vibrations, blah, blah, blah. The spider can then easily locate its prey and approach it to kill and eat it. All right, so let's paraphrase this body paragraph. The orb web permits spiders to immediately uh, realize when their prey gets caught. Since spiders can feel the vibrations of their prey getting ensnared, um, as they lie in the center of orb webs. Mm, consequently, spiders that utilize orb webs can easily locate, approach, and eat uh, their prey. Okay, so that's the reading's third reason and major point. All right, now that we're done reading the passage and taking notes, let's go back to the uh, whiteboard and listen to the lecture. Before I turn on the lecture, I want you guys to pause the video and to copy the note-taking diagram that's on the board, which is in red. So please, I know that it might be tempting to copy the sentences or words that are in black, but please refrain yourselves from doing so because I want you guys to first listen to the lecture as if this were the real test and take notes, okay? Number two, once you're done listening to the lecture and taking notes, I want you guys to compare your notes to mine. And last but not least, Rewind the video to the beginning of the lecture and listen to the lecture one more time while taking a really close look 
at the whiteboard, all right? So that's the process that I want you guys to take yourselves through because it's the best kind of practice. All right, now let's listen to the lecture. As you probably know, spiders use webs to catch their prey. They may use either orb webs or cobwebs to do so. Some believe orb webs are better. I, on the other hand, favor the cobweb as the spider's ideal kind of web for a number of different reasons. The cobweb is a three-dimensional web built in the shape of a cone or triangle and is located in the branches of trees or plants or in man-made structures. Unlike an orb web, a cobweb is generally made of irregular strands of spider silk and has a much denser structure. Therefore, ensnared insects cannot escape as easily as they can from an orb web. Remember that the spider's food source is integral to the production of its web, so it can ill afford to allow any prey to escape lest it die. Cobwebs are much stronger than orb webs. Orb webs only consist of one flat layer of web strands, and these may easily be broken by the wind, bird, or even, you know, large insects. Once an orb web breaks, a spider must start again from scratch to rebuild it. Cobwebs, however, are denser and stronger, meaning they break much less easily. Because they're three-dimensional, damage to one section doesn't mean the spider must rebuild the entire structure. It only needs to repair that one section. Last but not least, cobwebs are much safer than orb webs. Because the spider must lie in the center of an orb web to feel the vibrations of captured prey, it is easy to be spotted by its natural enemies like birds. Cobwebs, on the other hand, are not so vulnerable to attack. The spider can lie deep in its dense folds and remain hidden from outside enemies. All right. Now, the professor is, yeah, obviously in favor of the cobweb, okay? So, the lecturer's opinion in this situation was fairly simple. You can't really add too much because that's all that the professor said. So, the professor's opinion is that the cobweb is the ideal kind of spider web. That's it, okay? Now, for the first argument, she said that the cobweb is a three-dimensional web that's built in the shape of a cone or triangle. Now, where the cobweb is located isn't really important in this section, so I decided to omit and take it all out. But by the way, it was a, the professor said that cobwebs are usually located in trees or other man-made structures. Like I said, it's fine to add it, but it's not necessary, all right? Okay, so therefore, unlike orb webs, cobwebs are made of irregular strands of spider webs, spider web, and has a much denser structure which means that ensnared insects, ensnared means caught or captured. Ensnared insects cannot escape easily from where? Not orb webs, but cobwebs, right? Plus, the food source um, of spiders is integral to their production of web. So, it's pretty clear that the cobweb is more beneficial or more effective, all right? Okay, so that's the first argument. Now, it's gonna be uh, very important for you guys to understand and remember which web you're going to have to say or write um, while you're taking a look at your notes because those are the obvious subjects and nouns that I omitted. Understand? All right, now let's go over to the second argument. What's stronger than O period W? Obviously cobwebs, right? Cobwebs are much stronger than orb webs because what only consists of one layer? Orb webs, right? So that's what I'm talking about. You got to know that it's orb webs here, not cobwebs. Because orb webs only consist of one layer of web strands, which can be easily broken by the wind or even large insects. As a result, once what breaks? An orb web. Once an orb break breaks, spiders have to build them all over again or build it all over again. On the other hand, what breaks less easily? Cobwebs, right? On the other hand, cobwebs break much less easily and do not need to be rebuilt when they do break, since spiders only need to repair the damaged, damaged section of a cobweb. 
All right. Okay. Now let's move on to this third argument. What's safer? The cobweb, right? Cobwebs are much safer than orb webs. In orb webs, spiders must lie in the center in order to feel the vibrations of their prey. So um, it is very easy to be spotted by their predators. On the contrary, cobwebs are not vulnerable or, or are not as vulnerable to attacks due to the fact that spiders that use cobwebs can remain hidden from their enemies. Okay. Now that we know what I took notes on, let's go to my laptop and look at my sample essay. Okie dokie, I just finished typing the sample essay, so let's get to it now. All right, my introduction paragraph. The reading passage and lecture have conflicting opinions about whether or not the benefits of utilizing orb webs outweigh those of using cobwebs for spiders. The article strongly postulates that the orb web is much more efficient at both snagging and confining spider's prey. On the other hand, the listening adamantly delineates that the cobweb is the ideal kind of spider web due to several compelling reasons. All right, so the first sentence is revealing to the reader what the topic of this integrated writing prompt is. The second sentence explains to the reader what the reading passage's opinion is. And the last sentence is obviously dedicated to the lecturer's opinion. All right. Okay, now let's look at the first body paragraph. This is the reading's first reason and major detail. Oh, and uh, before we move on, snagging is a synonym of capturing and confining is a synonym of uh, holding in this context. All right. Okay. So let's look at the reading's first reason and major point. First and foremost, according to the author of the excerpt, orb webs are very difficult to notice in bright sunlight and even more difficult to see in the evening due to their one-dimensional design. Hence, most spiders favor building orb webs as their prey usually innocently flies or walks into them. Okay, now this is the lecturer's first argument. Nonetheless, the lecturer offsets these points by declaring that the cobweb is a three-dimensional web that's normally built in the shape of a cone or a triangle. So as you can see, I did not write a single word about where uh, cobwebs are usually located. Therefore, unlike orb webs, cobwebs are made of irregular strands of spider web and thus have a much denser structure. Needless to say, ensnared insects cannot escape that easily from cobwebs because of their complicated design. Plus, a spider's food source is integral to its web production, so cobwebs are clearly more beneficial in this aspect. All right, now, I really cannot emphasize enough the importance of writing complete sentences because I've seen, or so too many of my students have um, written essays that are kind of irresponsible, and I mean irresponsible in this manner. The sentences that you write don't completely deliver what it is that you mean. And even though you know this, you just leave the sentence as it is and just move on to the next sentence. That's pretty irresp irresponsible. Now, you gotta make sure that every sentence and every word you write in, this, in an essay has a purpose, all right? Whether that purpose is to add some more zest into your essay or to deliver your information and what it is that you're trying to actually kind of write in your essay more clearly, it really doesn't matter what the purpose is, but it needs to have a purpose, okay? So please focus on writing complete sentences that, helped, that help the reader understand your opinion or your thoughts, or in this case, the lecture's information and the, reading, the reading's information. All right, now I noticed the mistake. There are three R's here, so I took one out. All right, let's move on to the second body paragraph. This is the lecture's second argument. On top of this, the professor in the lecture further asserts that cobwebs are much stronger than orb webs, which only consist of one layer of web strands that may be easily broken by the wind or even large insects. So instead of typing, because orb webs consist of only one layer, I decided to connect that detail by adding a comma and a which, so a descriptive clause for orb webs. I felt like that sentence structure was much more efficient, so I decided to go with that. Okay, let's keep reading. Additionally, once a section of an orb web breaks, spiders have to build it all over again and waste their silk. 
On the other hand, cobwebs break much less easily and don't need to be rebuilt from scratch since spiders only need to repair the damaged section of a cobweb. Now, waste their silk was not mentioned by the professor in the second argument, but I knew that that was what the professor was inferring, was implying, so I decided to add that in there. And um, it's even more obvious to add this detail here because the second reason and major point of the readings of the readings opinion was that um, orb webs allow spiders to conserve their silk. Okay. All right. So here's the reading second reason and major point. These claims refute the writer's implications of how the shape and simplicity of the orb web enable spiders to use their silk more efficiently and much more quickly, which is very important to some species of spiders. All right. Now, the shape and simplicity of the orb web, those are two things. So I had to type enable, not enables, all right? That's a mistake that a lot of students make because they only pay attention to this here, simplicity of the orb web. So their brain tricks them into thinking that this sentence only has one subject when it actually has two, the shape and simplicity of. All right, now let's move on to the last body paragraph. The article lastly points out that orb webs permit spiders to immediately notice when their prey gets captured because spiders typically lie in the middle of orb webs so that they can feel the vibrations of the bugs that get incarcerated. Now incarcerated here means captured, okay? Now let's look at the lecture's last argument. The speaker in the lecture counters these indications by asserting that utilizing cobwebs is much safer than using orb webs. As mentioned above, in orb webs, spiders lie in the center to notice when their prey gets caught as quickly as possible. In contrast, this benefit entails many downsides as a spider on an orb web is easily spotted by its natural predators. On the contrary, spiders that build and use cobwebs, which have numerous layers and folds, are not so vulnerable to attacks simply because they can hide from their enemies. All right, so that was my sample essay for this integrated writing question. If this topic was challenging and difficult for you guys to comprehend, my advice to you would be to study my sample essay and to review it until you become familiar with this topic and subject matter. Because that's the, uh, that's the only way to guarantee yourself that you won't have such a difficult time when you do encounter this subject again in the future. All right, now let's move on to independent writing. Today's independent essay topic is, which type of job do you think is better? A high paying job with few vacations or a job with many vacations and decent pay? Now let's start reading from even though, because that's where you're gonna have to start filling in the blanks with your own appropriate sentences. Okay, so from this sentence, even though some may adamantly believe that a job with many vacations and decent pay would benefit people much more than a high paying job that doesn't have many days off, I strongly think such opinion lacks coherence to some extent. In my humble opinion, having a profession that enables individuals to earn a lot of money in exchange for their leisure time is much more practical for the following reasons. So my opinion is that a high paying job, a lucrative job with few vacations is a little bit better than a job with many days off and mediocre pay. All right, let's look at the first body paragraph. First and foremost, the majority of individuals would agree with the notion that landing an occupation with a high income will engender a myriad of advantages. Landing an occupation just means getting a job or finding a job. The main reason behind this rationale is that the purpose of studying hard in school is to get accepted to a prestigious university and to get a high paying job, meaning that making money through one's profession is what working is all about. It's sad, but it's true. No one, I mean, not many, most people are not willing to work for free. Am I right? Okay. Second detail. In addition to this, without a sufficient salary, people wouldn't have the ability to enjoy their free time or vacations because we need finances to enjoy leisure activities, which is also true. You can't really, you know, go to the movies for free or eat out at a nice restaurant with your friends for free either. So yeah, those are the two details. 
Okay, now let's take a look at the example, which is the most important part of any body paragraph. To illustrate more thoroughly, my grandfather is a person that comes to mind whenever I think about an individual who sacrificed his spare time for the greater good. My grandfather worked as a corporate lawyer for three decades and was able to save up a lot of money thanks to his high pay. However, the amount of money he got paid came at a cost, since he rarely had any vacations to enjoy with his family members. He told me that he had to work 60 hours a week on average, whereas the normal full-time job requires people to work 40 hours a week. His weekends were usually riddled with meetings and appointments in court and with CEOs of corporations. It goes without saying that his profession was very stressful and taxing, but it allowed him to support his loved ones without any concerns. Plus, my grandfather was respected by most of his peers since he was regarded as a driven, dedicated, disciplined, and successful figure in the community. Whenever my grandfather had some days off from work, he went on trips to foreign countries like Italy and France with his family, which was all possible due to his lucrative job. Okay, now, this is once again a fake story. My grandfather didn't do any of this. But if you believe that this is the actual person that was my mom or parents' dad, then good, great. That was the, that was the purpose. So what I'm saying is you don't have to write an example that's truthful or that's nonfiction. It can be fabricated as long as it's not something that's too difficult to wrap your head around. All right, now here's the ending statement, which is uh, an insurance sentence that makes sure that your body paragraph is not off topic, okay? So please add something like this at the end of each body paragraph, just to be safe. All in all, we can and shouldn't overlook the upsides of landing an occupation with a high income. All right, now let's look at the second body paragraph. On top of this, choosing to prioritize vacations over one's income can result in unfavorable ramifications. In the eyes of many people in present-day society, the amount of money in one's possession is typically considered inadequate since life is full of unexpected situations such as emergencies and accidents that require one to spend finances. Moreover, no matter how many vacations a job provides, workers wouldn't be complacent if they aren't being paid enough to prepare for retirement or enjoy their days off. Okay, so the second body paragraph is mainly focusing on how prioritizing free time over the amount of money you make can end up being a really, really bad choice because of unexpected situations and the uh, eventual preparation that you'll have to partake in when it's time for you to retire or when it's almost time for you to retire. Okay, now let's look at the example. A great example of this would be people who have low paying jobs. Said individuals, so said individuals means these individuals, okay? These individuals may have work schedules that aren't ex as taxing as those of other occupations. Now taxing here means demanding. Okay. That aren't as taxing as those of other occupations, but they are always stressed about their financial standing due to their insufficient pay. This is precisely why so many of these people have no choice but to continue working even when they're in their 60s or 70s. They simply don't make enough money to save up for a comfortable retirement and eventually need to rely on their children for financial support. Therefore, even on their days off from work, these people need to seek out part-time gigs. Part-time gigs means part-time jobs. Seek out part-time gigs to make ends meet or just sit at home and wait for time to pass since they don't have a surplus of cash. So what I mean by this part is even if you have free time, if you don't have enough money to do whatever you want, then you'll just have to sit at home and do nothing at all. Okay, let's continue reading the example. What I mean is sacrificing one's free time for a higher income is the much wiser choice as all of the time invested in making money will pay off once it's time to retire. It doesn't matter how many vacations a person had if he or she isn't financially able to stop working and enjoy life when they become too old to work. Additionally, whenever unforeseen problems arise, these people may not have enough money in the bank to handle them. Okay, so that was the example. It was a hypothetical example that talked about 
um, various or actually two or three situations in which not having enough money might become a huge adversity. Okay, now let's look at the ending sentence once again. Long story short, it's clear as day to me that prioritizing vacations over income can be very detrimental. Now, I hope you guys noticed that the ending sentence and the reason are very similar. Because if you did notice that, writing the ending sentence for each body paragraph will be something that's a piece of cake for you, all right? Okay, now let's look at the conclusion paragraph, but we only need to really focus on the sentence here. We can come to a mutual agreement that, actually this right here, that a high paying job with few vacations is much more beneficial. Okay, so that's something that we just need to check because that's gonna be our opinion and we need to make sure that it's a complete sentence. So an independent clause, all right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, that just about wraps up today's video. Now, if you guys enjoyed and thought that my sample essays were helpful, please don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you still have not done so. Ask me any questions in the comment section below and please share my content with your close friends and family members. Last but not least, if you are curious about the services that I provide, feel free to contact me via Facebook Messenger or my email. The next video will be focusing on independent speaking questions, task one and task two. So if those speaking questions are giving you a lot of difficulties, stay tuned and be sure to check out the next video. Peace out.